I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome back to another episode here at the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Mark Middlestead. This week, our topic is the self. And on today's episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast Weekend Edition, we're going to discuss programming the ultimate identity thief. This week, Bill and David have been discussing the self. Since this is the inaugural episode of the weekend edition of the Stress Mastery Podcast, before I get started, I'd like to take a moment to tell you a little bit about myself and to give my thanks to Bill and David for giving me the opportunity to carry this great podcast series into the weekends and also to the members of the Stress Mastery community. It's each and every one of you in the community that make it one of the best online resources for sharing, support, and encouragement for those who want to master stress and live with purpose. Most of you in the community know who I am, but for those who don't, I've been on this path of personal growth and spiritual development for over 40 years. I went back to school to get my degree in the field of psychology, and I've been in the creative arts as a professional artist, musician, and writer most of my adult life. I am the author of the best-selling book, The Alchemy of Purpose, and soon will be releasing my new book, The Mindset Reset, which is a companion guidebook to The Alchemy of Purpose. Both are available on Amazon. My expertise lies in spiritual growth, the psychology behind human behavior, and how the programming of our mind has caused us to operate unconsciously, which limits our potential. I am also a life coach, though I'm really more of a spiritual teacher, mainly from the Taoist and Buddhist philosophies, although I've extensively studied all major religions, and so these weekend podcasts are going to take you from the spirituality to the science of stress mastery. You can learn more about me and my teaching at my website, theartistwithin.com. That's the-artist-within.com. And also by joining the Stress Mastery community, which, by the way, is free for the first 30 days. I encourage you to check it out. I'm a regular, active, contributing member to that community. So with that, let's get started on today's episode, Programming the Ultimate Identity Thief. What do I mean by the word programming? The dictionary defines programming as the act of writing computer code or the act of scheduling television or radio programs or behavior that has been instilled. For our purpose here, when it comes to personal growth, we're more focused on behavior that has been instilled. And as we know, the human is hardwired for behavior. What's wrong with instilling correct behavior into others? Regardless of what tribe we belong to, it is obviously necessary to instill behavior that is in line with the beliefs of the tribe, whether it is our family, school, the workplace, or even society. Isn't it a parent's responsibility to teach our children right from wrong, or what is proper and expected behavior? Isn't it also necessary to instill correct behavior into students, workers, or even members of our society? Without the programming of what behavior is acceptable, Everything would be chaos and society could not function. So we obviously need rules to live by and expectations that need to be upheld in order for us to function together with each other. So you can see that the programming that instills behavior is not necessarily a bad thing or that there is something inherently wrong with it. We do need a certain amount of order to live with one another. So really, programming is simply a matter of functionality and compatibility. We get programmed with beliefs that allow us to function within the tribe. So the tribe can function 
collectively as a whole. With everyone in the tribe believing the same things, we are then compatible with one another, and this serves the tribe. This is logical. But as I mentioned, what we get programmed with is the behavior that is in line with the tribe's beliefs. Therein lies the problem with programming, the belief system itself. I say this a lot, but it bears repeating. Beliefs are nothing but a collection of thoughts we hold to be true, even when they are not true. So because the programming stems from a set of beliefs, not all of what we are taught is actually true, even though it may appear to be. Yet we see our ability to function within the tribe as evidence of it being true. But there is a big difference between functioning at a low base level and being highly functional beings. The problem is we become dysfunctional when our beliefs are incompatible with others or incompatible with our purpose in life. How do we know when a belief within our programming is not true? It's quite simple. When any program is activated by an event and you find yourself reacting out of emotion, you become personally dysfunctional. Then you know the program is faulty. If it weren't, you could easily remain functional regardless of any external stimuli because programming is neither good or bad. It's simply about functionality and compatibility. Faulty programming always leads to dysfunction of some kind. This dysfunction will always lead our ego to defend our own beliefs and attack others for theirs if they're incompatible with ours even when our beliefs are not true. Our beliefs have everything to do with our sense of self. They establish who we think we are and why we think we are here. Much of our programmed belief systems run parallel with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. At the beginning of human history, we survived because the programming was solely to ensure the most basic need of survival, and this worked for thousands of years. But as we evolved, much of the programming had less to do with survival and more about the feeling of safety and security. Unlike the programming of survival, where staying alive provided all the evidence needed to believe it to be true, we willingly accepted the programming of safety and security as truth so long as we felt safe and secure, whether we actually were or not. Ask those aboard the Titanic if they felt safe and secure or if they actually were. The beliefs around the feeling of safety and security began to introduce emotional programming, where our emotions are used against us by others or our ego uses it against ourself. It exists to this day firmly entrenched into our belief systems. The two most powerful tools of mind manipulation are fear and guilt. Isn't this why we will so willingly give up our sense of self and be who we are told we should be? Get the safe and secure job because that is who you are and why you are here. The belief is, you exist solely to support your existence. That is the more comfortable choice. The faulty belief that health is a matter of luck and you have no control over it, so you give your control away to your doctor. The faulty belief that every problem we have with others is their fault, not ours. This kind of programming does not need to be true to be believed. It simply plays on our emotions. Fear is the easiest emotional tool of programming. If you can get people to be afraid of something, they are easily manipulated and they will not question it. But if they do, you make them feel guilty for doing so. Any belief that gives us a sense of comfort will be thought to be true, whether it actually is or not. These beliefs are our comfort zone. 
Is it any wonder we question our sense of self repeatedly throughout our life? Who we really are has been programmed right out of us, and we willingly accept it simply because these beliefs make us feel comfortable. But this self is not who we really are. Up to this point, the self I have been talking about is the tribal self. Our tribe is nothing more than whatever group we belong to, which has a core set of shared programmed beliefs that allows us to be functional and compatible. So long as we feel comfortable, we will not question those beliefs. No matter what tribe you belong to, if you are a member, be assured you have been programmed. No one, not one single human being, can escape being programmed. It has nothing to do with intelligence or the ability to resist it. Programming is all about a belief system that allows the tribe and its members to be functional and compatible. So long as you're functional, compatible, and comfortable with it, you won't even notice the programming or its effect on you. But this tribal self has no autonomy and it is not self-authoring. This is the programmed self. This is not a criticism of whatever tribe you may belong to. Programming is not good or bad. Again, it's simply a matter of functionality and compatibility and nothing more. Yet at some point in one's life, just being functional will not be enough and we will want more out of life. Most people live their entire life being quite content with just being functional because it's so comfortable. Look around you and tell me this isn't true. Again, not good or bad, it just is what it is. However, when one awakens and begins to question the beliefs of the tribe, life starts to get uncomfortable. But this is when we will begin the journey of self-authoring our life by questioning who we are and why we are here the two most profound questions we could ever ask ourselves. When I ask these questions of people, they often respond with the labels and roles they take on and play. Yet these are not who we are, nor why we are here. They are merely the function of our programming. If you are the labels given to you, or that you give yourself, or if you believe who you are is what you do, then who are you when you're not doing these things? Who are you when you switch roles? Are you not the same person behind all these labels and roles? Who is the real you playing these roles? Remove every label given and roles you play, and who is left? Who is this self? So once again, all these leftover tribal and self-imposed labels and roles are removed. Then we begin to explore ourselves from an existential or spiritual perspective. As we begin to explore our true self and self-author our life, we may shed our old programs, but all that means is we will now swap one set of beliefs for another. When we begin the spiritual awakening, we may turn to other religious or philosophical beliefs that provide more answers than our previously programmed ones did. And once again, we will accept these new sets of beliefs as truth, so long as they are compatible with our new way of thinking and we are once again functional and comfortable in our new labels or roles. Make no mistake. These new beliefs are still a form of programming. Religion is just another tribe we belong to with its own belief system. A different group of like-minded people with a philosophy that aids in our growth is still another tribe with its own belief system. They will all have their own methods of programming, which again is neither good or bad. The Stress Mastery community itself is a tribe with its own set of beliefs. And even this podcast you're listening to right now is yet another form of programming, or as I like to think of it, reprogramming. 
just as I attempt to do with my new book, The Mindset Reset. I'd bet that if you asked Bill if he is programming you with a new set of beliefs, he would confidently answer, yes. But Bill is aware that because he is in a state of continual growth and expansion, his beliefs and teaching will also grow and expand beyond what he currently teaches. This does not invalidate what he teaches now, because he teaches from what he knows as truth via experience, not solely from knowledge. Again, we will know truth when the belief allows us to function. Programming based in truth will always allow us to function at a higher level. Remember, programming is neither good or bad, right or wrong. It's simply a set of beliefs that allows functionality and compatibility. So within the context of a newfound religion or philosophy or any other new tribe we join, as we seek to discover our true self, know it will come with a new belief system. The real question then is do we believe these beliefs that are taught to us? Do they allow us to function at a higher level than we used to? Do these beliefs serve our purpose? This requires awareness. So just be aware that the programming never stops. We simply need to be aware if it allows for functionality, expansion, and growth. Our true self can only be found within. And truth can only be found by continually questioning our beliefs. I live by the credo, I am supremely confident in my beliefs because I know they must change. That is the key to growth, being willing to change your beliefs when they no longer serve you. It's how we've grown out of our tribal self and how we will continue to grow and self-author our life. I'm not espousing a new set of beliefs. I'm not attempting to program you. I'm merely provoking you to think differently. Only you can determine if these different thoughts will allow you to grow and function at a higher level. So as we seek to answer the questions, who am I and why am I here? From a spiritual perspective, we're going to look at spiritual teachers from other religions or philosophies and thus join new tribes. When I am asked, who am I and why am I here? I often respond with, I am God experiencing myself. I did not always believe this, and I most certainly was not programmed to believe it. In fact, to even say such a thing was an immediate expulsion from my tribe, be it my church, my family, or even friends. I say, I am God experiencing myself, only to provoke a different way to think about ourselves. If we can think of ourselves as God experiencing itself, with no separation, only oneness with the consciousness of the universe. This removes all limitations we were previously programmed with. It is a new belief of liberation. Is this belief true? Well, it does allow me to function at my highest self, so until proven otherwise, I believe it to be truth. It has been said that we are not human beings having a spiritual experience but spiritual beings having a human experience. In essence, we are God experiencing ourself. Our programming taught us we are limited beings, and we would rather be stuck in that comfort zone than to step out and explore any possibility beyond it. It's the comfort of the lie of who we were taught to be. Make no mistake, Awakening to our true self and letting go of the tribal self is disturbing and uncomfortable, if not even painful in some way. And the tribal programming reinforces this discomfort, making us doubt the truth when presented with it. It will most likely leave us wanting to go back to the comfort of our tribal self. This is why it's so easy to fall back into the comfortable life we left behind limiting as it is with its belief system and all those faulty labels and roles to fulfill. If we see ourselves as limitless beings, i.e. 
God, then we really have no limitations with regards to our identity, and we can create our life in any manner we choose. Lao Tzu could not even bring himself to label God as anything other than the Tao, which means the way. He said, the Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. He knew that even giving God a label was limiting. So why do we keep insisting on identifying ourselves with labels and the roles we play when all of it is so limiting? You cannot place a limitation on the limitless. When you believe God can only be this or that, you've placed a limitation on God. But this limitation exists only within your mind. It's the same with ourself. We are limitless as God. And so whatever limiting belief we have about ourself isn't a truth. It's just another faulty belief perpetuated by our programming. Perhaps it is too much of a stretch for some of us to believe we're God. But know that we are limitless beings, and so we might at least believe God lives in and through us, if that is more acceptable with our current beliefs. As Richard Bach once said, argue for your limitations, and sure enough, they're yours. It's the tribal programming that has us believing we are limited in some fashion, Yet all the great spiritual teachers throughout history have taught us we have no limitations because we are all one, one with the consciousness of the universe, or God. How can we be one with God, yet also separate and not one with God? Which is it? It is only the tribal programming that teaches us these limitations and separateness. Jesus himself said that he was the way. Buddha said that we are all the Buddha, or the way. Lao Tzu called God the way. All of these teachers taught us the way is within us already, showing us the way by how they lived their life. And yet, we don't actually live the way. If we aren't living the way, it's only out of a reluctance to let go of our faulty beliefs. We are, for the most part, asleep at the wheel, going through our life without any awareness of the way, believing so strongly in the programming that we are somehow separate from the way, or God. Is it then any wonder why we deal with so much suffering and stress? Stress mastery is about following these spiritual teachers who showed us the way. They taught us who we are, why we're here, and in this identity, we can live the way. Things will no doubt cause us stress because stress or conflict is just a continual part of life. But that is not the same as being stressed out. We master stress by living as the master itself. Know this, we are what we believe ourselves to be. Our life is always the evidence of this belief. We can always be less, but we can never be more than whatever limiting belief we hold to be true. So who do you believe your true self to be? If you were given a choice, would you choose to be a limitless being or a limited one? It's just a choice. Don't allow the programming to steal your identity. Well, that's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply clicking like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. And as always, until next time, stay inspired.